Now, a look at a sexual revolution in ways you might not expect. Jeffrey Brown has this latest addition to the NewsHour bookshelf. Suburbia, sex, satire, and a touch of the supernatural. Subjects Tom Parada has taken on in novels and the films and TV shows adapted from them. Among them, the 1998 book Election, made into a film starring Reese Witherspoon. Who put you up to this? What do you mean? You just woke up this morning and suddenly decided to run for president? In 2004 came the novel and then film Little Children with Kate Winslet. It's him. Oh, Jesus. And most recently, The Leftovers, an apocalyptic tale that became an acclaimed HBO drama. Sam? 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 Now Tom Parada is out with his seventh novel titled Mrs. Fletcher, about a woman coping with her empty nest, her son who's gone off to college, and the sexual boundaries both explore. Tom Parada, nice to talk to you. Oh, great to talk to you. So, for you, the writer, we're looking at sort of sexual norms today. Yeah, absolutely. So, in a way, this is a book about college and identity. Eve sends her son Brendan off to college, and she's alone in the empty nest, and she's looking for a way to jumpstart her life. She's lonely, and through a strange series of circumstances, starts looking at this porn that, um, confuses her, but also it's, it features middle-aged women like mm -hmm. herself, and it makes her see herself as possibly an object of desire. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, it kind of changes her view of the world. As ordinary situations that seemed completely innocuous before are suddenly charged with some uh, erotic possibility, and sometimes she acts on that. You get to look at the limits of acceptable behavior today. Yeah, and I'm always interested in this idea of transgression and the fact that the line keeps changing. You know, so in Little Children, the adulterous couple, that's not the scandal. You know, but the, the pedophile is the scandal. And, and whereas in the 19th century, in novels like Anna Karenina or Madame Bovary, the adulterous couple was the scandal. So we keep redefining where that line is. And for Eve, worrying about her son's porn consumption, yeah. and, she, and she just feels like, oh, that's, it's terrible what these kids are exposed to, and it's had harmful effects on him. And then she starts looking um, out of curiosity and it gets under her skin in, in a strange way. And so she's in that uh, place that a lot of my characters are, where um, she's doing something that she herself disapproves of, but she can't stop. It's Jane Austen, right? I mean, this is the stuff of how do we treat each other, what's allowed and what's not. That's right. I've seen, you know, my parents' generation had one view of sex my, and one experience of sex. Uh, my generation had another. And now my kids are, are coming of age in a time when um, you know, all sorts of sexual identities are suddenly available, but also this um, huge amount of pornography on the internet. So that, you know, any kid who wants to be exposed to the entire encyclopedic spectrum of yeah. uh, of sexuality can get it. And I don't. I just don't think we know exactly how it's affecting people. I think part of the fun of this book was to show a middle-aged person experiencing uh, this late in life kind of sexual re-education. You know, and I, I want to say, I mean, for the audience, too, I mean, we're talking about a book that is sort of about pornography and sex. There's not a lot of, this isn't a book with a lot of pornography or even a lot of sex, for that matter. You're, you're writing about sex, a book about sex without a lot of sex. Yeah. <laughs> so, I hope that doesn't disappoint anyone. <laughs> um, right. I, I, think, I think it's really about how we think about sex, how sex factors into our identity. Um, and how that identity can uh, change at different points in life. Um, for instance, Eve takes a night school class on gender in society, and she has a transgender professor. And the book kind of tracks this moment that we've just lived through, where um, you know the culture has started to redefine gender as a spectrum, um, to um, see that trans people are you know, human beings and part of the community. Um, but it's also been challenging to, to a lot of people who are used to thinking about sex in, you know, very binary terms. And mm -hmm. so, and just thinking about gender in very binary terms. You know, it looks like you're a writer who's sort of, in some ways, tracking his own life. I mean, I, I wonder if this is fair. I mean, I think of early novels as a, a, a young guy and then, uh, and then, you know, married, living in the suburbs with kids. 
and then up to today as an empty nester, it sounds like yourself, right? Yeah. Is that fair? That is absolutely fair. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's something you're, I've You're noticed. your own material, huh? I, I am, and, and so I don't often write about myself or people I know, but I do write about the life passage that I'm going through. And it helps in a way because I think I'm very close to it while I'm writing. Um, so it's not seen through that mist of nostalgia, you know, and so I really felt like, you know, what I was reading in the newspaper was feeding directly into this novel. Is your television experience um, impacting your fiction writing in terms of storytelling or how you, how you even approach a novel? Um, I don't think so. You know, I feel like if you look at Mrs. Fletcher and you look at uh, some of my earlier work, I think you'd say that's the same writer um, doing that. On the other hand, um, what has happened is I've become much more aware of what's special about novel writing. What are the kinds of things that I can do? I can go into a character's head. I can have a kind of follow their inner monologue in a way that's very difficult to do in, in a drama. And so I think that I try to avail myself of the tools of fiction. When I'm writing fiction, I'm much more conscious of, of that. All right, the new novel is Mrs. Fletcher, Tom Parada. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Great to talk to you.